So thought against person, we get to see different types we have. And within that, again, we have domestic rights as well coming in, okay? It might be thought against body, reputation, freedom, or it might be affecting domestic rights of a person. Same ways mm -hmm. when we talk about property, right? Property may be divided in two types, movable property and immovable property. Now, okay. as such, we don't have like a uniform definition that applies for movable and immovable property for all the laws that you would be getting. Like you would come mm -hmm. across Transfer of Property Act. Their definition is a bit different. You must have already studied Indian Penal Code. There also you get definition, sort of definition of movable property, right, in theft. So that definition is completely different with what you would get in Transfer of Property Act. Okay, so these words, even though in general we have a common understanding on what is movable, what is immovable property, there are some differences that we uh, see while studying different subjects. Okay, because torts is something which is not codified, we can refer the definition that is given in General Clauses Act. Okay, so property is divided in two types, movable and immovable property. Okay. General Clauses Act. Uh, are you aware of it, what this act is all about? No. It's a legislation that provides for definition. Okay, otherwise what we see, like Indian Contract Act. First of all, some words would be defined, then it would provide you all the rules and regulations relating to contract. But this is just mm -hmm. like a general clauses that it provides for definition of certain words. If you are not getting a definition or something, you can refer this legislation. Okay, so we can okay. refer that legislation for the purpose of thought as well. So what is okay. immovable property? Immovable property shall include land, benefits arising out of land, things attached to the earth, or something which is permanently fastened to anything attached to the earth. Like you would see, when you study labor law, you would see heavy machines that are operated in a factory or industry. It might be permanently fixed to something attached to earth, might be a building. Right. That is also considered as immovable property. You would see okay. some uh, trees, plants, some crops growing on the earth. That's also something attached to the earth. It's also called as immovable property as per general clauses set. But this okay. definition will be completely different when you are studying transfer of property. Act. Okay, like trees and stuff, usually not considered as immovable property there. So this is what we know about immovable property, something that is attached to the earth or permanently that is fixed to the earth. Okay. And movable property would include anything else that is remaining. Anything what is not immovable, that is movable property. So tort against property may be in relation to movable property or in relation to immovable property. And there are different classifications which we see. For movable property, trespass to goods, trespass ab initio, detinue, conversion. And when we talk about immovable property, trespass injury to reversionary rights, waste, dispossession, wrongs to natural rights or easement, nuisance, all these different types we are having. Now, thought against property, it can include a lot of different movable as well as immovable properties that we have. These are the definitions. And now we will see what are the different types of thoughts that may be committed against movable property. Okay. First of all, trespass to goods. Otherwise, we see like trespass, trespassing a, so, someone's private plot of land, right? Without permission or without invitation, entering someone's plot of land. Same thing can be done even in relation to goods, even in relation to something which is movable, movable property. So trespass means wrongful conduct where a person enters or disturbs possession of another person's property whether movable or immovable, or causes any damage to the body without consent of the person. It means intention has to be, intention is there with that intention you are entering there and you are causing some kind of disturbance or some kind of problem for the other person. Trespass to goods will, will take place when there is an actual direct or indirect damage to the person's goods or wrongfully 
taking away any goods from the rightful owner without his consent, without the consent of the owner, if we are taking something out of their possession and thereby disturbing them, that's also something where we are disturbing them. That's also trespass to goods. It means... As it's meant... Yeah. Uh, as it's mentioned as uh, wrongful act, whereas there is a disturbance or, uh, or a damage to that person. Hmm. property or hmm. so hmm. suppose there is no damage at all but even then if you are the owner of a certain goods i should not be disturbing your possession if i am doing that might be i have not caused any damage to the property but i have affected your right i created disturbance for you that is enough might be the property is as as it is i have not caused any damage to the property but i affected your right you had a right to exclusively enjoy that plot like whatever uh, goods you are having, but I'm disturbing that. Okay. okay. So the, the okay. act of trespass of goods means unlawful and intentional disturbance with possession of goods by taking it away from possession of the rightful owner. When you are the owner, you have absolute rights to decide what you want to do with the goods. If I am disturbing that right, does not matter if your goods are damaged or what it is some kind of disturbance. So that would be taken into consideration. Okay. So Not if A is a friend of B and B is the owner of motorcycle showroom, one fine day A is waiting for B to come out from his house. A without consent of B removes the tire of one of B's motorcycle. Thus A does the act of trespass to goods. Without permission, he is, you know, like, or uh, displacing, misplacing, whatever he is doing. It might not be as such he damaged the tire or something, but even in such a case, we would consider it because the possession is being uh, disturbed by the person. So that should be enough of a reason to uh, disturb the other person. Okay. So there was this case where it was that the defendant wrongfully entered the plaintiff's land and had wrongfully cut and carried away the standing crops, whatever was growing in his uh, plot of land, he just carried it along with him. Like in IBC, we call it as theft also. Right? So in this case, defendant is liable for the act of trespass to land as well as trespass to goods because the defendant damaged the goods which are in rightful possession of the plaintiff. From his possession, without his permission, he took those uh, goods along with him. So that is also enough of a reason to consider that it is trespass of goods as well, because goods were taken out of his possession. His possession was disturbed by the defendant here. Okay. okay. Another one, we have trespass of an issue. A person who legally takes movable property in possession, but later abuses it or waste it, that is wrongfully disturbs his own possession, renders himself liable as according to trespass, as according to trespass of initial. The plaintiff must show that he has rightful possession, that is actual or constructive. His possession was wrongfully disturbed. Now, actual possession as in maybe you are owner of a plot of land and you are staying there. That is actual possession. Constructive might be that, uh, you know, like you are not staying there, but maybe the property documents are given to you, like in case of loan, mortgage, etc., or maybe keys are with you, even though you are not residing there. That is constructive possession. Okay. So you might, you must have rightful possession. Plus, his possession was wrongfully disturbed. Now, what is happening here is you have taken the possession. Your entire thing was only done wrongfully, right? I entered someone's plot of land. I took the goods from there. Entire thing was wrong. But here, what is happening? Initially, it was right. Initially, possession was taken rightfully. But later on, I'm abusing it. Okay, later on, what I'm doing, maybe a person has given his car for repairs, 
it was in legal possession right the owner himself gave the car for repairs the person took possession also it was a legal possession everything was fine but later if b abuses or wrongfully disturbs possession of the car then he is liable for trespass of initio in this situation b has legal and rightful possession of the car but if he later abuses that possession that makes him liable for it so car was given to him only to repair if he is abusing it in any way that is nothing but would fall under this classification of tort initially it was all fine later on the person started abusing it okay. is okay. it clear or confusing no i understood i'm uh, relating with the service i mean the example of that service example okay yeah so first one entire thing was wrongful second one initially it was all good later on the person just started abusing it next is uh, detention okay the act in which a person wrongfully holds movable property of another the person who wrongfully detained the movable property is known as wrongful detainer for the purpose of recovery of detained property the plaintiff has to prove that he has lawful right to possess the movable property and that the defendant wrongfully detained the possession of movable property for example a gave a pressure cooker to b to repair it later on a pays for the service also but b even after receiving the payment refuses to give the cooker in such a case it would be detention so we all you must have uh, okay you have not studied yet next semester you would get indian contract act there you would get one concept called bailment okay so once you are giving your goods for some kind of servicing repair and stuff you are expected to make the payment for it also okay pay for the services if you are not making the payment for the services in that case this person is having a right to keep your cooker that unless and until you make the payment i'm not giving you it i have repaired it but i'm not giving it to you but once the payment is cleared from your side right this person need to give it back to you if he is not giving that is nothing but detention his for his services payment was also cleared he repaired the pressure cooker also but even after that he is not returning it he is detaining it okay so the main difference in these two cases is here after he got the rightful possession after that he is abusing it maybe he started using the cooker maybe he started using the car himself that is nothing but abuse it was given to him to repair but he started using it for himself that is nothing but he is abusing it but this one is like it might not be he is using the pressure cooker as such but he is simply not giving the possession back okay okay next one is conversion it's also something we commonly use right converting something so what is conversion conversion is used for wrongful taking or using the property of another and the remedy which is available to the plaintiff is known as action of conversion now what we need to prove here that the plaintiff has law lawful right to possess movable property and the defendant has wrongfully converted possession of the movable property for example if a person found some type of goods on the street and refused to give it back to the owner as he had doubt about ownership then in such cases he is not liable because the finder of goods right whoever finds something just lying there on the road might be ownerless right that person is having a right that he properly inquires about who is the owner and after that he gives possession so if this person doubts ownership of this person it's fine he can refuse also so that is as such not conversion but if it is discovered that the person demanding the property is actually the rightful owner and even after that the finder of goods refuses to give it back in such a case we can say it is conversion maybe i got something lying there on the road i simply picked it up after that i cannot say that okay it is mine okay i can say it is mine 
only when i have made some inquiry to find out the owner i have not found him after that i can claim that okay i found it so it's mine but before that i cannot say that okay so my right is not like superior to right of the original owner if original owner comes back i need to give it back to the person if i'm saying that no you should have been a little more careful i'm not giving it to you in such cases it would be conversion it was goods of another person i converted it into my own goods which is not right okay we have a case also where a sweeper boy found a gold jewel in the garbage he went to the goldsmith to sell the gold also so what goldsmith did is in order to take advantage he said it's not even gold it's just some uh, random thing that you have got so he uh, wanted to buy the gold from the boy in a very less amount saying that it's not even gold the boy refuses to sell it and he said you give it back to me goldsmith denied to give it back in such case the boy approached the court and court held the goldsmith liable for wrongfully detaining the goods so in this case it is something which is conversion why because this sweeper boy he got the jewel if the rightful owner is not coming he is not able to find him this person would be having right over that jewel because he was the finder of goods as such the goldsmith cannot say that no i'm not returning it to you because you just got it there in the uh, garbage he cannot say that so court also said that yes it would also fall under this classification okay so there are four classifications for movable property first one where everything was illegal first of all unlawfully goods were taken unlawfully some you know like right was being affected right to peacefully enjoy goods was being affected second one initially it was all good rightfully possession was taken but after that he started abusing uh, the right like in case of a car which was given for repair he started using the car himself that in your detention is something where the person even after uh, everything is done right the contract is being performed even after that he refuses to give it back once payment is made for the services even after that he is refusing to return the pressure cooker he is detaining it conversion is your goods i'm just simply turning it to my own goods which is not right that is nothing but conversion is if it... the trespass to good is uh, detention is also trespass to good yeah all are nothing like but unlawful. trespass to goods also in in a way it is trespass to goods only you are affecting somebody else's uh you know like peaceful possession of goods you are affecting that but in what way you are affecting these are the different types we call it more likely like detention because you are detaining it you are not giving it back to the person here you are converting it so it's conversion so we call it with these two names but in one in the way example or the other, of that sorry. yeah sorry uh in that example of pressure cooker repair that okay. time the owner has given voluntarily for the repair hmm um uh, on a flip side is there any uh, suppose someone is taking a property from a movable property from someone hmm. without that person's knowledge itself and detaining hmm. so with the, this will be considered as a detention or as a robbery no um, in that uh, case everything yes. was uh, it would fall under this one right because initially itself it was uh, like unlawful right you have secretly taken it from another person so it would be trespass to goods you have affected that person's right to enjoy it but detention okay. we say that after one point in time right you don't have a right to detain it with you but you are still doing it you had a right to detain it until the pressure cooker was repaired until the payment was cleared but once everything was cleared you don't have the right to detain it if you are still doing it that would be detention okay and this one yeah so these are the four classifications we have for a uh, movable property same ways we have immovable property also and these are the classifications relating to it first of all trespass so you must have already studied what trespass is right yeah 
So trespass in order to constitute the tort of trespass, we need to uh, like uh, prove that force, unlawful detention, actual damage, breaking of enclosure, all these things are not needed. What is enough is that somebody entered another person's premises. That is enough. It might happen that no actual damage is caused, no breaking of an enclosure, no breaking of doors, windows are there, but still trespass is there because someone has entered premises. Mostly we see in empty plots of land also it will be written, trespassers will be prosecuted. As such, it's just an empty plot of land. There might not even be like the boundary walls. What would you affect there? But still it is trespass because it is someone's private plot of land. So as such, it's not needed that unlawful detention, force, damage, breaking of an enclosure, not, not necessary. Simply entering is also enough. So trespass is actionable per se. You need not prove that damage is caused or something has happened. Someone entered your premises without your permission or invitation is enough of a reason to uh, claim compensation. Trespass may be committed by different ways, like by entering wrongfully upon land of the plaintiff. The slightest crossing of boundary is also enough, but if somebody you know, like pushes another person into boundary of another person. It was all unintentional. It just suddenly happened in such cases it would not be lawful. And mostly we would also see some situations where, you know, like might be dogs are chasing me and I simply entered another person's property. I have a valid reason to tell that person, right? That even though I entered your property, there is a reason why I did it, right? I did it in order to save myself. And Usually, no normal person would mind that. They would simply ignore it that, okay, fine, it's not trespass. So by entering wrongfully upon land of the plaintiff, we can trespass it. We have simply entered someone's plot of land. It may be by remaining there in the land. So what is by remaining there in the land? If a entering person has, Yeah, sorry. Entering and staying there. Yes, entering and staying there might be you entered there lawfully after that you are refusing to come out. Maybe a movie hall. You booked a ticket for one show and once the show was over, you were expected to come out, but you said no. Entire day, whatever movie you are showing, everything I will see and then only I will go. This is nothing but trespass. If I enter some maybe public places, some park, there also some closing timing would be there, right? Seven o'clock, eight o'clock, they would say, okay, we are closing it. There also, if I'm saying that, no, I will stay here only until tomorrow morning. That's also trespass. So initially we entered rightfully. After that, we simply said that, no, we are going to stay there. That's also trespass, remaining there in the land. By interfering with the land, or by constructive entry. So constructive entry is in something which is not, uh, you know, like not directly, like we say uh, direct possession, as in you are staying there in a plot of land. Constructive possession might be that you have the keys of that certain plot, but you are not staying there. That might be constructive possession. So what is constructive entry over here? Every interference with the land of another is deemed to be constructive entry, which amounts to trespass might be someone is throwing garbage or other things, right? It is not like he is directly entering there, but he is in a way uh, making something enter there, which is creating disturbance, okay? Like constructive entry. Because of that, the other person's peaceful possession is being disturbed, okay? So these are different types, how trespass uh, can happen or how it can take place, how rights of the owner over his immovable property may be affected. Okay. Injury to reversionary rights. Now, what is reversionary rights? So a reversionary is a person who has, so say reversionary is like at present, okay? At present, you are not like the absolute pro owner of a certain property but it's like a reversionary right like i'll give you an example okay might be there is a plot of land there is a plot of land and you are given ownership okay it was gifted to you by someone and there was a condition in that 
it was said so a person gifted you the plot of land and the person said that until and unless okay until and unless my wife is alive okay until and unless my wife is alive my wife will be having a right to stay there stay in the property she can stay there she can enjoy the plot of land almost like an owner she can stay there okay but she is not the owner of the property once she dies once she dies after that you would get your ownership that means it is reversionary right once this wife dies right after that only you would become absolute owner as of now you are not like the absolute owner of the property that is nothing but your reversionary right as such it's not your ownership right it's reversionary right so a reversioner is a person who has lawful interest in land but not in its present possession for example landlord and a reversioner interest in his interest uh, is an interest vested on contingent enjoyment of which is postponed reversionary interests are enjoyed by either uh, the stranger or by tenants so reversionary right you can take this example very simple example initially it used to happen where uh, women were not given right to property so like the father would say until and unless your mother or your sister is alive they will have complete right to enjoy this property after that it would come to you that is nothing but reversionary right okay so even though you are not the owner at present your possession is being delayed your ownership right is being delayed even after that if your right is affected that is also taught that is injury to reversionary right okay at a later stage you would be getting the property right might be this wife is already like too old and we know that hardly 10 15 years she would survive so i am causing such kind of a damage to the property or maybe to the soil that at present it's not affecting the soil it would affect it would start showing the results after 10 15 years in that case i'm not affecting rights of this wife as such i am affecting your reversionary rights that is also nothing but a tort even though you are not owner at present okay next is waste so it is to spoil or uh, destruction of houses gardens trees or unlawful damage caused to immovable property by the person who was just given lawful possession of that property such damage must be permanent in nature and uh, should cause prejudice to the owner of the or the reserve uh, reversioner essentials of waste an act or omission such act or omission must be done by the tenant or anyone in possession it must cause prejudice to the owner or reversioner mostly we see in case of rent agreement lease agreement they will say you can't do any sort of drilling and stuff you can't do drilling you can't fix certain things a lot of things would be written in those contracts why because they don't want uh they don't want to cause damage to the property as such okay they don't want that you damage the property because it's something that they would be getting back once the agreement term is over right so that there it applies in case of lease also they would say okay you have uh, your you know like rights you can enjoy this property almost like a owner for 5 years but these certain things you cannot do you cannot cause damage to the property as such you cannot waste the property same way if we take this example this wife cannot think that okay it was my husband's property how come this person is getting ownership after my death what i will do is i will start damaging the property destroying the property that should that uh, she should not be doing that is also nothing but waste intentionally i am wasting the property that should not be done i have an obligation being the tenant being the lessee i have an obligation to maintain it and return it in the same condition how i got it okay so that's why we see right mostly in case of rent agreement or all people would pay uh, charges painting charges also why because they got the house nicely painted and everything they have an obligation to return it in that same condition definitely over time it, it would not remain same so they make the payment for painting charges so that is nothing but waste right intentionally we should not be wasting the property as such is it clear okay yes okay. next is this possession 
the owner is said to be dispossessed of his immovable property when the defendant does an act which declines the overall domination of plaintiff over the property. The owner can also be said to be dispossessed of the property when defendant acquires settled possession of the land with the intention of acquiring exclusive control over immovable property of the owner. We even have a legislation called a Specific Relief Act where you can ask for some specific type of relief that it was my property, I was dispossessed from it. Somebody else took possession and I was thrown out of this property. You can claim for these rights also that I want to get back my property. Okay, so this is nothing but dispossession. Like take for example, might be you are having two plots of land. You have two plots of land. One plot, you are staying there. And another plot, plot number two is something which is like uh, located in not like not in a very good place. It's an empty plot of land. So what you have done is there is just boundary wall and you have entered into a contract with somebody else and you said that, okay, fine, you can park your vehicles here. Okay, so what you are giving, you are not constructing anything as such because it's not in that good of a place. You simply said that, okay, you can park your vehicles over here. In such a case, if this person, what he is doing is, contract was for one year. Now contract is over. What he has done is he has parked some unused damaged vehicles. He just occupied the entire space. He is not removing his vehicles also. He is not paying you rent also. Agreement is also over. He is simply being non-responsive. In such case, what he is doing? This possession, right? You are the owner. After agreement is over, you have a right to that entire plot of land. If he is occupying it by parking his vehicle, which is like unused damage, that means he is occupying it. So you are being dispossessed. That is also nothing but a tort. Okay. Okay. Another example, you can say that, okay, might be this was like an empty plot of land. One person said that, okay, I want to start like the small shop and I want to sell might be tea there. Okay. I would sell tea, but for that, I need some basic electricity connection and it would be like commercial electricity connection. Right. So you said that, okay, fine. We would apply for uh, electricity connection. What this person did is he applied the connection in his own name. So once he is paying electricity in his own name, after 12, 15 years, he can claim ownership rights over there, right? So if you come to know about it, that, okay, he has taken electricity connection in his name in this certain plot of land, there also you can go to the court and you can say, I am being dispossessed. He is taking connection in his own name. It should be in name of the owner only, okay? So that is dispossession. Next one is nuisance, which is again common. There are two types, public and private nuisance. Usually when we talk about public nuisance, it falls under IPC. And also there is one provision in uh, Code of Civil Procedure. CPC also we get some one provision where uh, we can file a civil suit as well for public nuisance. Otherwise, public nuisance is most commonly called as a criminal wrong, but private nuisance is a tort. Uh, excuse me. Uh, yeah. In disposition, yeah. will it be something similar to that of trespass? That option, I mean, uh, the point number two, remaining there in the line. Hmm. See, in case uh, of have... trespass, it's like simply entering. Might be I simply enter your, your premises. That is trespass. You were there enjoying your land peacefully. I, as such, did not throw you out of your house. You are there, but I also enter. That is trespass. The here. You are dispossessed and I'm there enjoying your plot of land. Okay. Okay. You are being dispossessed of your ownership rights. All right. Okay. So nuisance, we have private nuisance. So private nuisance deals with the act of interference with rights of specific individuals or persons which deal with their inconvenience, harm, their suffering, etc. So being owner of the plot of land, you also have a right to peacefully enjoy your plot of land, right? So if I'm affecting that right in any way, that might be considered as a nuisance. 
so examples would be like okay so there is this example that a person was keeping some horse, horses what he would ideally do is he would take his horses in the evening and he would again take them back he would keep them within his premises one day what happened is horses stood out on the road in front of plaintiff's uh, shop for a very long time and it was during evening usually during evening only he would have like good sales customers would come to him buy things from him etc and during that time only horses were just standing there in front of uh, his shop as a result people could not come shop uh, the uh, customers could not come to his shop because of the bad smell that is that was there and because of being scared of them they were not coming in that case plaintiff can be held liable because because of his thing defendant's business got affected that is nothing but nuisance creating some sort of uh, problems or troubles same ways we see parking a vehicle right in front of the gate being the owner of a certain house you have a right to you know like way and excess also you might want to take out your car you might want to take out your bike if there is a very big car parked right in front of your gate that is also nothing but nuisance it is creating trouble for you right might be your neighbor is playing very loud music at night maybe there is a a uh, wedding hall next to your house they are bursting crackers every single night playing music all these are nothing but nuisance some kind of disturbance uh, that is created in your peaceful possession of the land okay but as such we can't say that okay we need like absolute silence that is also not uh, like practically possible right so it will depend on what kind of an area you are living that's why we have areas being segregated residential area commercial area industrial area in an industrial area i cannot say that okay there is so much of pollution and noise and stuff it will be there some minimum level of noise and pollution will be there but yes industries need to ensure that they are following the guidelines and stuff right as such i cannot expect that might be i'm buying a house right in front of the highway so that it's easier for me to travel to places i can't see that it's very noisy there because i have chosen it for myself i want the convenience of residing there in front of a highway the you know like the return thing also i will have to expect obviously there would be noise in a highway or in a main road so these are certain things it depends on the situation also what kind of noise it is okay okay so in case of nuisance it might be like indirectly affecting a person's peaceful enjoyment but it again depends on what kind of an area the person is living what kind of disturbance is it is it just one time thing or is it something which is continuing based on all these things uh, it would be considered whether it is nuisance or not okay so these are different types of uh, torts that may be committed against an immovable property okay any okay. point you want to be explained again no all of you okay will you be giving this uh, word file uh giving what this word file okay yeah sure Not i'll share hey before we continue i wanted to inform you about my life mentorship program for llb students or law aspirants law subjects and law topics need detailed clarity we get that with the help of cases examples and detailed explanation it's definitely not possible to include everything in this short videos if you find my videos easy to understand and you are looking for some professional help in preparing for your examination you can join my live mentorship program here you will be getting exam tips answer writing skills detailed notes that you can refer for your examination cases examples and in a very easy way topics will be explained i have live classes going on for a lot of subjects as of now to know more about it you can drop me a message on this whatsapp number i'm also helping a lot of students in writing their assignments If you need any such help or for any queries any suggestions you can drop me a message on this whatsapp number and now let's continue with our video